we rescue the 658 baler, we have to take the good tire, one good tire off of this, and get ready to put it on the baler that's stuck right now. So we're gonna take this up to the shop, and I guess we might as well repack the bearings in this because it needs to be done anyway. And uh, like I said, it'll already be in the shop. All right, now before we rescue the 658 baler, the one that's uh, stuck in the mud over there, we got to get the tire off of this that goes on that. I know it's complicated. <laughs> It makes sense in my mind. So since we have to swap tires on this anyway, we have to go to the shop where we can put it on a real floor. And uh, I figure we might as well repack the wheel bearings in this while we're at it anyway. Because who knows how long since that's been done. It'll probably be fine, but uh, this, way, this way I know what I got. Unfortunately, this thing will not fit in the building. This thing will not fit in the building uh, unless I open the other side door, which I'm not going to right now because I've got a bunch of stuff in front of it. doesn't look that bad, uh, but I'm still glad we're doing this. Well, it looks like this has probably been serviced at some point. There is what appears to be a little bit of moisture in this grease. It's got that signature kind of slimy consistency. So it's probably for the best we're doing this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a little rust and some slime on there. But honestly, these do not look like they're in bad shape. Let this uh, bearing just sit in some grease here. Or sit in some solvents while that grease can break down. All right, so these are the seals that we got. I found the New Holland part number for these seals and they were like, I don't know, 11, 12 bucks a piece in shipping. And the place I was looking at only had one of them in stock, so I'm like, that's not gonna work. I was able to cross-reference this to an SKF seal number and I bought a whole bunch of these for like, I don't know, several bucks cheaper per seal. It really wasn't that much cheaper, but it was still kind of nice. And these do, in fact, look like they are the proper seal. So, I guess that means we gotta figure out how to rip the old one out of here. And this isn't something I've really done other than like once before, so this is gonna be interesting. All right, let's see. What is it gonna take to rip this thing out of here? We'll try to push that bearing down as far as it'll go so that's out of the, out of the way. We're probably not gonna get this lucky. Oh my goodness, <laughs> today is my day. Okay, yep, there's uh, some definite filth and crap in that. Now some people will say, Chuck, you really need to do this. I mean, it goes 20 miles an hour or whatever. And uh, that is a perfectly valid question. The reason why I repack wheel bearings and farm equipment like this is mainly so I know what I have. And the other thing is it's really cheap insurance. Every single one of these we have four to do, it's costing me like a, whatever that was, a 10 or $11 seal with shipping uh, and a couple bucks worth of grease and a little solvent and a couple rags. That is not bad. The alternative is you don't do this and it turns out one of your wheels actually needs to have fresh grease in it. And uh, then like you're cruising down the road going out to a field and you lose a wheel in the middle of traffic, you know, at the height of hay season. Really, really bad time. This is, uh, this is pretty cheap insurance as far as I'm concerned. All right, now, I'm out of paper towels in here. I was gonna bring some out this morning. Of course, I forgot. I'll try to get these huge wads of grease out of this thing. Oh, look at that. You know, everybody always used to tell me when you gotta clean nasty stuff out of something like this, just use some diesel fuel or whatever. And I was like, man, that's the hokiest, most redneck thing in the universe until I tried it and it actually works really well. Look, this is almost already completely clean. I'm a little leery replacing bearings and stuff like this if I think there's any good left in the originals. There are a few marks on the, um, on the bearing race there just from where it's been sitting, but I don't think that'll probably cause too many problems just because you don't really know what you're getting and unless you can cross-reference this bearing, which I guess I could to like, you know, a Timken or something, I'd feel eerie about 
Swapping out probably perfectly fine old American bearings for questionable new Chinese ones off of eBay or whatever. All right, this is not turning particularly smoothly now. I mean, it's fine, but you can tell the grease is out of it. Now we gotta get that diesel fuel out of here. All right, y'all know I am no expert, but in my book, that is one squeaky clean bearing. Let's dry this off a little bit. Now we gotta blow out the rest of that sealant, or the solvent, rather. I just gotta pack this new grease in here. I wonder if this red grease is worth the premium. It's only a couple bucks more than the, uh, and the El Cheapo stuff, so I figured, hopefully. All right, let's see. How's this turning? Already much better. Yeah, that's getting down in there. Look, it's already coming out the front. All right, we'll pack in about half again as much. And we will hope that I am doing this right. I'm sure it's one of those deals where everybody kind of has their own way. Oh, that is turning pretty smooth now. Adding some from the front. Okay. okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna set this bearing aside and repeat with, ah, this one, look at that nastiness. All right, well, here we go. All right, I'm gonna say that's pretty good. So in goes this, just like that. Now it's grease seal time. Mm, pretty sure it goes like that. Man, I probably could reuse the old ones. No regrets on investing in new ones after, uh, you know, 25 years or whatever. Oh, that is a nice tight seal. My luck's running out. Got this on here. And uh, also, when I went to move it, this fell out, so I have to go and, oh, uh, look at that. We even got a goat turd in there. Disgusting. Now oh, I gotta go repack this. You gotta be kidding me. Shoot, I need that washer. Okay, now we give these a really good reef down to get everything positioned how it should be. All right, that's probably 50 pounds of force or so. Man, that grease feels pretty thick when it's chilly like this, probably 40 degrees today. I'm gonna tighten it up just until that is gone. That might have been a little far. Yeah, there's no side to side movement, so I'm gonna call that good. Let's see if we can get this back on. This is either gonna go really easily or just be a total disaster. I brought a brass hammer so hopefully I don't smash it up too bad. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, now this wheel actually does go on this baler. It's the other one we have to take off for the new baler. All right, one 
wheel down, one to go. It's gotta knock this out real quick and then it's time to rescue the 658. Just if anybody ever needs it for a future reference, the back bearing here, the larger one, seems to be LM603049. It's a USA made Timken, which is actually really nice to see. And the front bearing in this is a Koyo USA, which I think are supposed to be really good. L58149. It might be L68149, something like that. It's either five or six. All right, check it out. The baler now has mostly matching tires. Anyway, I got this wheel on, and uh, now I guess we gotta get this thing out of the way. Also, I don't know if I told you guys this, I bought a tiller. We've not had a chance to try it out because it rains constantly, but we're going on three or four days without rain in a row, which I don't think has happened since it started raining endlessly in like September. But if this continues, we'll, uh, we'll make a video setting this thing up and trying it out. In the meantime, I guess it's time to double check the pressure in these, in these tires, and then move this thing out of the way and try to rescue that 658. So, uh, we're not doing the Baylor rescuing the 658 today either. This is like the third or fourth time I've postponed it because Mechanic Steve showed up and instead of me bothering him to fix old tractors, he's bothering me to fabric cobble a bumper on his truck. 